Hey everyone, the name is Chris Barocci. Welcome to Gear Corner. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about fuzz pedals. Now, why is it interesting and why is it important to talk about fuzz? Well, to be honest, I've spent probably way over 10 years of playing a guitar without having any understanding or idea of how a fuzz sound works, you know, what I should play, how I should approach, you know, a, a sound like that. And I just, uh, you know, I just ended up hating it and just ignoring it. And then later on, I kind of figured out a few things. So um, I started loving it way more than I ever thought I will. So uh, I think it could be useful for you too. Before we dig deep, two things. First of all, check out the description box under the video. It's full of useful information, timestamps, etc. And also, if you like the videos, please hit subscribe and ring that bell. Helps me a lot. I have a short list here of things I think are very important to know how to play a fast sound. If you're used to an articulate and sort of, you know, tight and maybe even modern gain sound, distortion sound, you will have to get used to fuzz sounds. Let me show you an example. This is going to be a sort of a medium gain sound I'll use for rock without any fuzz involved. And then I will play the fuzz instead. And you'll see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, it's not articulate. It's not, you know, crisp and clear sounding at all. It's the exact opposite of that. What you can do instead is try single note lines. They will work pretty damn good. And you'll have a huge sound where you don't really miss a, a full chord because that one note will just ring and have all the frequencies, you know, ever imagined. <laughs> It will sound mean and big and nasty, but that's exactly what, what a fuzz is for. You could also try power chords, but you might want to start just with the, the root notes and the fifth. So not even the octave. Uh, maybe it will sound more defined and sort of clear. <laughs> And of course, even though humbucker pickups will also work with fuzzes, well, with most fuzzes, single coils, especially bridge single coils, because they sound so bright, just sort of stay way more articulate with fuzz pedals. Number two, fuzzes don't really like buffers in front of them. N sometimes not even after them. So it's, uh, it's a tricky thing. You have to find the perfect position for your fuzz pedal in your signal chain on your pedal board. In many cases, the best way connecting a fuzz is right in the beginning. Like you go out of your guitar with your cable, go right in the fuzz, and then all the rest comes after it. Right now I'm using the SIB Nick Nitro fuzz, which is a silicon transistor fuzz, but it sort of simulates or sounds like a germanium transistor fuzz because it is basically um, fuzz phase kind of circuit just with a little more volume and gain and um, it also reacts like a fuzz phase would so uh, it is sensitive to stuff so I will just play something with it without a buffer in front and then I will connect one of my boss pedals turned off because I just need the buffer and boss pedals are buffered bypass so even if the pedal is off the buffer is still active and this changes impedance and everything in your signal and just check out what happens to to the pedal especially the cleanup if you turn down the volume on the guitar it's interesting <laughs>
number three. It's really important to figure out if you prefer fuzz into wah or wah into fuzz. These two type of effects belong together pretty much from the beginning, you know, Jimi Hendrix, etc. So um, you have to figure out if you want to use both, which direction works better. There are fuzz pedals that will not appreciate having a wah pedal or anything buffered in front of them, as told before. So, um, you know, in that case, you're sort of forced to, to do it the other way. So fuzz first, wah after. But, um, you know, you can definitely experiment and you will have a radically different sound. For this example, I'm going to be using the Gypsy Fuzz from Dunlop and the Crybaby Mini. <laughs> Your wah effect will be way more aggressive and sort of hearable if the wah is second. So fuzz first, wah second. Number four, stacking fuzz pedals with overdrives. Most fuzz users prefer having an overdriven amp or pedal sound when using a fuzz pedal for a number of reasons. First of all, you can shape your sound, your fuzz pedals sound way better. And uh, also it sort of gets a little more creamy and round and uh, a fuzz used with a totally clean amp could be a little too harsh or just pokey or thin even maybe, it depend depends on the fuzz pedal itself. But um, to have that sort of creamy, round, big fuzz sound, you sort of need some sort of uh, clipping going on after the fuzz pedal. For this example, I have the Raise the Dead uh, Germanium Fuzz from Tate FX, which is a very nice um, sort of medium to low gain fuzz pedal Germanium Fuzz. And um, I will use the Foxcatcher from Copper Sound after it. That's my clean signal, by the way. <laughs> Number five, it is so much fun using a fuzz for solos. So let's say you have your basic gain sound, which is sort of a medium gain, you know, sound. But then when you want to play a solo, you need some more sustain. You just want to have more mids and just a, a thicker sound. Well, you can of course boost your overdriven sound with uh, a clean boost, an overdrive, whatever, but you could also use a fuzz. For that, I love using the Gypsy Fuzz from Dunlop because it has the tone knob and uh, also it doesn't compress that extremely. <laughs> And of course, you know, when I'm playing deeper notes, you can hear that it's a fuzz, but otherwise when I'm playing like lead stuff, it just sounds 
thick and beautiful and articulate. Yeah, you can sort of trick and have very unique lead sounds. Number six, let's not forget about modern styles. Think about Muse, think about uh, Bill of Talent and all these kind of bands who use fuzz sounds or um, Smashing Pumpkins, obviously, and uh, other you know, sort of stoner rock bands too and all these kind of bands. So uh, you don't have to play Jimi Hendrix or Satisfaction or Cream or Beatles. You can stick to modern sounds and sort of like, you know, heavy rock, riffy kind of sounds. Uh, you just have to have the right fuzz. A great example, what I love using for that is the angle of fuzzy head. It's very nice with the low and the high EQ, so you can really set it up to fit whatever you know sounds you wanna have. <laughs> Number seven is the last thing on my list. It's about the transistors. So um, there are two types of fuzzes, as long as we're talking about analog fuzz pedals, germanium and silicon fuzzes. You shouldn't generalize because there are exceptions. You know, obviously, you know, they will not all be the same at all. Still, you could sort of expect certain things happening if you have a germanium transistor fuzz or a silicon transistor fuzz. First of all, if you cannot be bothered with uh, weird changes in your sound and, and unexpected things happening and crazy sensitivity in terms of buffered pedals in front of your fuzz or after or whatever, just go for a silicon fuzz because they're more stable. They will pretty much sound the same every time you use them. You know, it doesn't matter if it's in a cold rehearsal room or in your, I don't know, really hot apartment in the summer or whatever. They will have more gain probably, or they can offer you more gain. Um, they will have um, a bit more of everything, you know, bigger sound, more bass, more treble, more everything. If you're into modern fuzz sounds, a silicon transistor fuzz will probably be the better choice for you. Uh, the only downside is that most silicon fuzzes will have issues with um, turning down the volume on your guitar. They don't clean up that nicely and they don't have this super crisp and beautiful clean sound when, uh, you know, when you turn down the volume. Germanium transistor fuzzes, on the other hand, will have less gain, normally. Uh, we'll have some issues with temperature changes and um, buffers in front of it, even after it. So they are really sensitive and uh, sort of vintage -y. So if you're into vintage style fuzz sounds, check out Germanium ones. If you don't find anything you, know, you really like or fall in love with, maybe then try silicon ones too. Of course, you know, there are no rules. So it's not like you will buy one fuzz and you're good to go, unless you really just need the fuzz for one sound. Otherwise, if you want something that works well with another um, gain pedal, some sort of an overdrive, you will need a fuzz. If you want a fuzz pedal that really reacts nicely to uh, a wah pedal in front of it or after it, you probably need another fuzz. If you want one that's really modern, you probably need a third fuzz. So it's it's tricky. It's so much fun using fuzz pedals if you know how to use them and if you can adjust your playing to to fuzz pedals. Also, let me know if you have some experience with fuzz pedals and uh, there's something I forgot to mention and you think it's very important. Please use the comment section. That's why it's there and I'm checking it all the time and reacting and trying to, you know, reply to everything. So um, it's gonna be awesome to see you down there. Take care. Have an awesome new year, 2020. Rock and roll. Cheers.